guys, welcome back to my channel. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys and talking about an outdoor enclosure and the importance of an outdoor enclosure. And I just thought it would be really funny to film this intro of her covered in dirt. She just came out of the ground. You got dirt in your eye. She's covered in dirt, but yeah, let's just get into the video. So usually what I would do, I would just pick her up and bring her uh, just over to her outdoor enclosure, basically. And wow, she's leaving nice tracks on the floor. But for, I guess, the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using, what is this? The Living World. Yeah. So it's a Living World, like, pet carrier. And I'm just going to be using this for her because, I don't know, I'm going to be holding more things and I don't want to, like, drop her or anything. Um, and this thing is really heavy duty. I think it's a large or extra large. So, yeah, I found it on Amazon for, like, $10, I think. So, that was a really great deal. Um, I don't use it too often because I normally just carry her outside. Um, but if I ever need to take her to the vet or anything, I would definitely use this. Okay, so going to open this up and then place lemon in it there you go and now I'll just bring her outside So, we have this latch here. She is starting to know this place better, I think, but she still has only been in here, like, a couple of times, so. You know you're outside. <gasps> so pretty. Look at your arm. Okay, and then I just let her walk around here. And then that's basically what I do, and I gotta fill up her water bottle water bottle her water dish and also her other water dish gotta fill those up and there she goes into her little hide and then out the other end so i basically i don't know the exact dimensions of this area but i know it's 20 long oh, tw the width is 20 and i don't know what the length is but it's very long <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a big, very big enclosure for her. She has plenty of, of room. And yeah, she has her water dish, and then her other water dish, and her hide. And then these are basically just our gardens, and she can't get to them. And yeah, that's basically how it is in here. We're gonna put a roof on it, um, so that no birds can get her. But for right now, I'm just gonna, I supervise her, but once we get the roof on, and the siding, because you can see up there, there's no siding. Um, then I'm gonna let her free roam without me being in here. Yeah, that's basically what we're gonna do. And eventually when I can free roam her, I'm going to put a food dish and stuff so that she can just spend all of her time out here basically. Um, so yeah, this is basically her enclosure. And she only is in here during the summer months because where I live, it's actually very cold in the winter and fall, so. There's no way she could basically live outdoors her whole life because unless she needed to hibernate, but I don't really want her to hibernate quite yet. And also, I do not let Pebbles out here because I would definitely lose him because it's giant and he's like that big. So definitely I would lose him in here and he would burrow down and I would never see him again. I'll just let her walk around here. And I think it's very important to have um, an outdoor enclosure because it just lets them get all the natural UV rays. And I also make sure to have a bunch of highs and different, I'm gonna put different like plants and branches in here so that um, it's more like a forest because they are from foresty areas. But yeah, whenever it's possible, just make sure to Get them outside when it's the right temperatures and stuff. It's very warm outside today. It's in the 70s. Um, and it's just beginning. It's not actually summer technically yet, but it feels like summer. And it's definitely warm enough for her to be outside. 
And another thing that we added, I'll show you like over here. Um, we added these boards around the sides because she would just stick her head out right here, like through the netting, and then just stare out outside. And I didn't really want her to be sticking her head through the netting. So we just added uh, basically a kind of divider from the outside world, even though this is outside. Um, oh yeah, and with the mesh up there, it's not very fine. It's like, it's not mesh like that. It's like plasticky mesh. So all the rays, the UV rays can still come in and everything will be fine. Box turtles actually really don't need that much UVB. Um, I still give her a 10.0 inside because I use a T8 mold. Um, if I were to use a T5, I probably would give her a 5.0, but most people give them 5.0s. I give her a 10.0 just to make sure she's getting enough UV. And out here, of course, she's getting very strong UV because uh, it's the sun. And basically, you guys might be wondering, like, how does she not just dig out of here? Because she loves to dig. So she basically, I mean, of course, she loves to dig. Um, as you guys saw in the intro, she just loves to dig. So basically how I keep her out of digging out, um, we have this, it's just like a liner. And it's, it's like a fabric liner type thing. I stapled it all around the whole entire thing. I stapled, used a bunch of staples. So it's very strong um, and she won't, dig out because she won't be able to dig out of this. It's a pretty strong liner. Um, so yeah, she can't dig out and that's very important because so many people lose their pet turtles and this is not even close to their native habitat. Like, if they were to get out, they would definitely not survive, especially one that's been in captivity and it just wouldn't work out. So you want to make sure that they of course do not escape and that would also be really sad if you lost your box turtle or tortoise here. So I also wanted to point out uh, what I'm using as a substrate uh, because a lot of people are probably like it's not dirt so it's bad but basically you can use um, you can use a variety of things of, per of course dirt would be good but I don't we don't want a bunch of random weeds growing. Basically this is not dirt obviously it's a mulch or bark so if you see reptile bark, that's perfectly fine for them. Um, it holds humidity well, really well. But this this is the orchard bark or orchid bark, fur bark. Many different names. It's fur bark. It's also called repti reptile bark, I think. Yeah, repti bark by Zoomed, and that's fine for them. Um, but the the pellets that they give are not very good for burrowing. This is reptile bark, but it's just not named reptile bark. It's the same exact kind of bark or mulch. It's just much finer, so it's actually good for digging in, but she doesn't tend to really... She usually just uses hides, like that one over there, um, for digging or just find shady places instead of digging because, um, yeah, I guess she doesn't really find a need to dig, which is great because digging also wouldn't look very nice but we have a very thick layer it goes down really far I don't even know where it ends but um, yeah it's a very thick layer so if she wants to burrow down she can it also stays pretty humid because where we live it rains kind of a lot but it hasn't been raining and I won't let her outside when it's raining because I, I don't really want to do that because I don't want her to get too wet so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye!